Hello there! I'm Christy Sabins, and today we're hiking up Half Dome! Oh my golly goodness yes! Today we are exploring the glory of Half Dome in Yosemite National Park. This granite structure rises more than 4,737 feet above the valley floor and is a 16-mile round tripper in terms of hikeage. Translation, this trip is no duck soup, which yes, is in fact an idiom. <coughs> Speaking of soup, let me just give you a taste, sip, and a dash of what Yosemite is all about before we begin. This national park is located in California about four hours drive from San Francisco. The park covers an area of 761,268 acres and reaches across the western slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains. All in all, this place is huganticus and has so much to offer in terms of wonderful waterfalls, colossal cliffs, precious plumage, sequestered sequoias, and then some. Okay, I may be getting a little too excited, but seriously, look at this scenery and you try not to get galvanized. Alright, let's focus here. So, we begin our hike up to Half Dome on the Mist Trail from Happy Isles, which in itself is quite a spectacular trip. Only a little ways after you commence, you stumble upon the Vernal Fall footbridge and get a peek of the tremendous topography to come. Don't worry, at this point you're just 7.2 miles away from the top. Ain't no stopping us now. Let's continue. Now the trail becomes interesting as the paved walkway turns to water-washed stone steps that lead you to the majestic Vernal Fall. Expect to get spritzed along the way. They don't call this the Mist Trail for nothing. This fall plunges 317 feet from top to bottom and is fed by the Merced River, which runs throughout Yosemite Valley. The trail continues to the top of Vernal Fall, giving you a nice view of the misty mortals below and the rushing Merced waters. From this point, the scenery begins to engulf you as you trample along the rock line trailway, gazing up at Mount Broderick and Liberty Cap. After these mammoth mountains, take a left at the Chicory and cross Silver Apron Bridge. From here, you get a first-rate view of the Merced as it tumbles down from the roaring but unseen Nevada Fall. As you follow your ears, the fall soon begins to peek through the pines as it descends from 594 feet above. As the fall plummets, you begin your ascent up the many steps leading up to the intersection of the Mist and John Muir Trail. The more the fall comes into view, the more its name is apparent. After all, Nevada in Espanol means snowing, and the cascading foam does a great job mimicking a fast-falling flurry of flakes. Onward we go to the John Muir Trail, only 4.5 miles away from the peak. Thus begins your trek into the flat little Yosemite Valley, a welcome sight after the steps up to Nevada Fall. Within this section of the hike is the most visited location in the backcountry, a campground for backpackers with wilderness permits. While it's tempting, we ain't got no permits to stay for the night, so we continue to trudge up the trail. After leaving little Yosemite Valley, you begin up the forested switchbacks leading to the final leg of this magnificent journey. After the flat valley, these switchbacks make you worth. Let's go ahead and ignore my heavy breathing for one second to take in this lovely pine tree. Terrific! Almost there. After the switchbacks, you'll arrive at a trail junction with a sign directing you toward Half Dome, just two miles away. From here, the views really start to kick in all around, reminding you just how much elevation you've gained in the last few miles from the valley floor. But don't worry, you still have plenty more to gain. Once you get to the sparser regions of the rock base, Half Dome pops out of the horizon, luring you ever closer with its curvaceous beauty. On to the subdome! A zigzagging climb up granite steps until you finally reach the dome itself. An awe-inspiring sight indeed. Well, here comes the bad news. Upon reaching this final point in our trip, thunderclouds began to roll in, causing us and many other hikers to cut the trip short of the cable climb. Signs are posted saying to never climb when thunderclouds are on the horizon due to the high risk of lightning strikes. I wouldn't recommend climbing an open rock face while holding onto metal cables on a wet rock surface during a thunderstorm either. So we began our quick descent down before the storm came through. Back down we go the way we came, getting a chance to see the wonderful scenery one last time before returning to the valley floor. I hope you enjoyed this hike up to Half Dome. I'll return to conquer those cables someday. But until then, happy trails! <coughs> Papa loves mambo Mama loves mambo Look at him sway with it, getting so gay with it, shout no lay with it, wow.